Hi, Mick. But can you talk about the loss of Andrew Porter for the rest of the Six Nations Championship and um, what his loss means to the Irish team in terms of scrummaging, ball carrying, and what adjustments you're going to have to make to your uh, kind of overall game plan? Uh, there'll be no adjustments really to the game plan, but he, he's a big loss. You know, he's the, I suppose, the modern prop forward. He's obviously a, an excellent scrummager on both sides of the scrum. Um, but he's he's ball carrying for us. He's defending for us. He's a really good uh, poacher as well. Uh, he's a great man to get penalties, to get turnovers at the ruck, and he's no nonsense as well. I suppose to coach, he uh, uh, he just gets on with it. He's very easy to work with, very easy to deal with. So he'll uh, he'll be a he'll be a big loss. Um, his bench will probably go through the roof in this period, which he'll be delighted with. But uh, he's a big loss for us. But the way we've been training, um, and look, we saw it in the Argentina game in the autumn when, when guys started dropping out the day before the game, the, the, the warm-up, and we lost James Ryan then just before half-time. The way we've been training, a lot of the changes have been, have been seamless enough and have been easy enough. So hopefully it continues that way. Um, obviously, Keen and uh, Keen and and David Kilcoyne are with us at the moment, and we'll have a look at the guys now over the weekend and see if we can bring someone in. And in terms of the next game, obviously that's England. Um, you know, what areas do you feel that you need to improve most on ahead of what is a really, really big test? Oh, we need to improve everywhere. We need to improve everywhere. I mean. Um, uh, you know, we're going away from home, we're going to Twickenham with a full crowd. Um, England, I think, are just uh, bubbling and, and, and are just on the verge of a big performance. So every part of, of what we do needs to be done better. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd uh, opportunities, I think, at the weekend to, to score tries and we didn't take them just because of small little inaccuracies. And we did that as well in France where... Uh, I think we had opportunities, but we didn't deliver the kind of detail that we have delivered at times when we've managed to put teams under pressure. So um, there isn't any one particular area, I think, but everything just needs to be a little bit more accurate. I think one of the big things as well when we're away from home is is just being calm. Uh, that's one of the big things for the lads. Uh, you know, we, there's never any lack of intent or any lack of passion or emotion. Uh, when these boys play for Ireland, it's just being calm and the big occasion is an important part for us as well. Have you learned the a final question from me from, say, the start of France, where you know you shipped what it was a 10 points in the first little bit? I mean, are you in a situation where you can't afford to be like that against England in, in Twickenham? I mean, it's a really cauldron, isn't it? Yeah, well, everyone w wants to start well, you know. Unfortunately, both teams can't uh, get a ten-point lead. You know, we 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 did some things early on in that game which gave them access, things which were in our control. And uh, you know, that's a great thing as a coach. If you look at a game sometimes and you look at things that you you struggle you're struggling to solve or struggling to figure out, um, it can be tricky. I mean, in the start of that game. We exited poorly with a really good uh, kick-off take from Ty Byrne. We exited with a poor kick, and then we left them take a quick line out. And um, you know, it was nothing special after that. It was a, a lovely uh, pass on the inside from Intermac. Inter but uh, and then the ruck, the ruck penalty we gave away was all in our control as well. We probably went to ground a little bit easy and were slow to get to the ball carrier. And that's ten nil, and ten nil away from home. Is, is a long way to come back, particularly against a side like France or particularly against a, a side like uh, England and Twickenham. So um, it's an important part of the game. It's one we'll always be trying to get right. Um, if you can get that lead early on, it puts you in a great place. Thanks, Paul. Paul Helpings, the Spurner here in Virgin Media. How are you? Very good, thanks. Yeah, you don't want to be losing anyone, you know. Uh, I suppose we don't have the strength and depth maybe that other teams have. Um, um, and we don't want to lose our, our big men either, you know. Uh, he's one of our bigger guys, uh, which is which is pretty important for us. 
Um, and there's no doubt if you're starting, you probably get you probably get a few more reps than the other guys. You're probably a little bit further down the track in terms of your knowledge than the other guys are. But uh, Kean has been going back playing, which has been great. Um, David Kilcoyne hasn't as much rugby played, but he's gone back and played as well. Um, and when we've trained, you know, these sessions we've done against the 20s and when we've trained, particularly those Wednesday training sessions, we've trained very fast. They've been very physical. Um, they've been kind of a, a match intensity and a little bit higher. And I think the players have gotten great benefit from that. So uh, as well as that, that's 15 v 15, you know. So the guys have a lot more rugby under their belts than maybe than maybe, you know, their match minutes for Ireland would, would have you believe. Um, but there's no doubt losing a guy like Andrew Porter, his first choice at the moment, is a loss, but it's a great opportunity for the guys. Keen, um, you know, David Kilcoyne started the game against England uh, 12 months ago. Uh, he went off quite early and Keen came on and had a really good game. So there's great experience there. Um, so, you know, it's a great opportunity for these guys as well. They're really enthusiastic guys, want opportunities to play. So, um, you know, we're, we're very happy with what we have behind Andrew Porter. And with two games to go, where do you assess where Ireland are at? And I suppose Ireland's chances of, of being that team that lifts this trophy on Patrick's weekend? Well, we've a great chance. We're still in it. Uh, which is the most important thing um, um, and we're playing some good rugby at times um, there's real good ownership among the playing group there's real enthusiasm uh, I think Andy's managed to keep them fresh in terms of how they've trained and how they've how we've played and how they've prepared um, and they they really enjoy camp so uh, I think we're in a good place heading into the last two weeks um, it's important to manage the players now that they they're fresh heading into those games. You know, I suppose the temptation sometimes is to work a little bit harder. I think Andy's really good at managing that and the players are really experienced at managing that as well. I suppose a lot of the work has already been done. Those few days we spent in Portugal were great for us. So um, hopefully we can be, I suppose, fresh and full of enthusiasm now as we head, in, head into two big games. Robbie Henshaw is fine. He's fine. He's no problems. Um, um, he's, uh, he's, he's passed his return to play protocol, so he's, he's had no problems. That's great. And you just said if you came there, you would probably call a couple of props. You didn't call one of after Tom O'Toole got injured, but that's the, the thinking for the start of next week, isn't it, to get a couple more props in? Uh, I don't know if it'll be a couple of more props, but probably certainly one anyway. Um, we just want to see how they go with their, with their games at the weekend. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Hi, Paul. Uh, we'll hear from off the ball. Just wondering, new look second row combination against Italy last time out. Just your assessment about how Ryan Baird got on against Italy. Yeah, I thought he did really well. Um, you know, he waited for his chances to come and, and, and he took them when they came. Um, he was excellent at, at set piece. He had a great steal in the line out early on. Unfortunately, it bounced back into an Italian player's hands. Um, he probably, obviously, high on one tackle. He just has to drop his height a little bit and he was doing a little bit of work on that today after training. It's, it's normally a really good skill of his. He's normally a really good uh, low tackler. Um, but he was very good. He, he managed it really well. You know, sometimes I suppose players can get a bit of anxiety when they haven't had the, when they haven't the experience that other guys have. But he was very relaxed going into the game, uh, full of enthusiasm, and and he really delivered for us. You know, I, I suppose it's hard to tell sometimes. You know, from a forward point of view, there was uncontested scrums, so we didn't have any scrums to analyze and 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 look at his shape in there. They'd won Maul early on, and, and and he was excellent in his in his body shape and and and, and, and how he set up to defend that Maul, um, and and he just he was pretty seamless, and and that's one thing, I suppose it's a, it's a credit to James Ryan and Ty Byrne and Ian Henderson and how they run the line out stuff that we do. They they do a lot of walkthroughs. They try and make life as easy as possible for guys because we we've had a bit of a history of losing guys late, uh, coming into games. Um, so he, he was excellent and uh, again I suppose a little bit like Andrew Porter there was very little 
little management in him last week. We were just very confident that he would, he would be able to deliver in what he was able to do. And then, you know, when the chance came up, he's very good at chasing those block kicks. He's, he's great acceleration over the two metres to try and get to the nine. And then, you know, I don't think anyone was going to catch him. It was a great pick-up and a great finish for his try. So he did really well and we were really happy with him. Yeah, it probably probably was. It, it isn't sloppiness really. It's just uh, guys maybe making the wrong decisions and and forcing something. You know, uh, we, we have to be happy. We have to be happy. I suppose breaking teams down the right way and and not trying to get it done. Uh, not trying to get it done in a rush. Um, you know, we did a little bit of that in the breakdown as well, where we were where. It was a combination of some old habits which which cost us a little bit so for sure for us away from home against Twickenham there there'll be mistakes you know there will be turnovers they'll put us under pressure and force things to happen we, we have to live with that and, and accept that but uh, we want to make sure that we're not giving them any access through our own mistakes okay okay sorry sorry uh, sorry will we're gonna have sorry will we're gonna have to switch on to the um the embargoed section now because we're kind of getting tight on time there okay so we'll switch now into the embargoed section